uh, I write this letter on the 10th anniversary of the Iraq War on behalf of my fellow Iraq veterans. I write this letter on behalf of the 4488 soldiers and Marines who died in Iraq. I write this letter on behalf of hundreds of thousands of veterans who have been wounded and on behalf of those who bear those wounds. I am one of those I'm one of the gravely injured. I am paralyzed from in an insurgent ambush in 2004 in South City. My life is coming to an end. I am living under hospice care. I write this letter on behalf of husbands and wives who have lost spouses, on behalf of children who have lost parents, on behalf of the fathers and mothers who have lost sons and daughters, and on the behalf of those of those who care for the many thousands of my fellow veterans who have brain injuries. I write this letter on behalf of veterans, those veterans whose trauma and self-revolution for what they have done, witnessed, endured in Iraq have led to suicide, and on behalf of the uh, active duty soldiers and Marines, who commit, on average, a suicide a day. I write this letter on behalf of some of the one million Iraqi dead and on behalf of the countless Iraqi wounded. I write this letter on behalf of us all, the human detritus your war is behind, those who will spend their lives in unending pain and grief. Your position of authority, your millions of dollars of public personal wealth, your public relations consultants, and your privilege and power cannot mask the hollowness of your character. You said to us, you said to us to fight and die in Iraq. After you, Miss Jamie, dodged the draft in Vietnam, and you, Mr. Bush, went AWOL from the, your National Guard unit, your cowardice and selfishness were established decades ago. You were not willing to risk yourselves for our nation, but you sent hundreds of thousands of young men and women to be sacrificed in, in, in a senseless war with no more thought than take the put out the garbage. I write this letter, my last letter, to you, Mr. Bush and Mr. Jane. I write not because I think you grasp the the terrible human and moral consequence of your lies, manipulation, and thirst for wealth and power. I write this letter because before my own death, I want to make it clear that I and hundreds of thousands of my fellow veterans, along with millions of my fellow citizens, along with the hundreds of millions of more in Iraq and the Middle East, know fully who you are and what you are. You who are and who you are and what you've done. You have, you may have a justice but in our eyes, you were each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plundering, finally of murder. It was a lot of types, very small, my eyes are going. Um, Iraq and Middle East, 
know fully who you are and what you've done. You may have faced your justice, but now I you are each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plunder, and finally of murder, including the murder of thousands of young Americans, my fellow veterans, whose future you stole. I join the army two days, two days after 9-11, after 9-11 attacks. I join the army because our country had been attacked. I wanted to strike back and literally kill some 3,000 plus of my fellow citizens. I did not join the army to go to Iraq, a country that had no part in the 9-11 attacks and did not pose a threat to its neighbors, much less the U.S. I did not join the army to liberate Iraqis or to shut down mythical weapons of mass destruction facilities or to implant what you cynically called democracy in Baghdad and the Middle East. I did not join the army to rebuild the rank, which at the time we told us could be paid for by, by Iraq for oil revenues. Thomas, we, Thomas we're going to ask you to finish the letter um, after the broadcast, and we're going to post it at democracynow.org. But in these last few seconds of the show, is there anything that would convince you not to end your life in the next few months? Uh, not at this moment. There may come a time in the future when I, uh, when I say, hey, things are getting better. Maybe I should reconsider this. But at this moment, nothing in this world has made me change my mind as to what I'm going to do.